When you think about stealth action games, what primarily pops into your head? Metal Gear Solid, Splinter Cell, Hitman, Batman Arkham, etc. This subgenre created an entire laundry list of intellectual properties that continued to grow in the wake of the Metal Gear Solid boom. Before Metal Gear Solid, there was Tenchu Stealth Assassins on the PS1. This game was initially released in Japanese regions during February 1998, and it released in the subsequent territories months later. Not much is known about the development history behind Tenchu 1 other than the fact that Shinobi Haikusen highlighted a very different game from the final build. This Tenchu prototype seemed to be way more focused on action over stealth. While it looked very unique, I think it probably would have been more of a developmental nightmare with this engine and camera work being so fast paced for the PS1. Ultimately, it was scrapped in favor of a more methodical approach in the final build. Tenchu Stealth Assassins focuses on sneaking up behind unsuspecting foes, killing them in a variety of brutal animations, and avoiding full-on confrontation. There is a meter at the bottom left of the screen that shows a numerical value whenever you're close or far away to someone. The exclamation points are also visual cues that differ between AI points remaining undetected, gaining suspicious behavior, being semi-alert, or going into a full-blown alert status signified in different colors. You'll play as Rikimaru and Ayame, two skilled ninjas under the advisement of Lord Goda. There's a few differences between the two characters in terms of fighting style and divergent animations. Also, there's some hilariously bad dialogue waiting for you at the end of the tunnel in terms of Ayame's American voice actor. My money, my money. You won't need it where you're going. Oh. Hey, random fact really quickly, did you know that on the Reclaim the Castle mission, you can actually skip to the final boss of that section, which is Onikage? It's something I discovered, but apparently the developers left in a huge glitch where you can basically shimmy your way up all the way to the final temple and you can climb all the way up there, avoid all the enemies, and you manage to fight Onikage and get an easy Grandmaster rank. A lot of people have done this glitch. I guess I'm showcasing it right now. I thought it would be interesting to share in case you want to get through the entire level or show your willpower and actually power through the rest of the enemies during this stage. However, most of the game's structure in terms of missions between both characters remains largely unchanged outside of a few noticeable changes I've already listed. They even have the same ninja tools, which only does something of value if you implement a code for Ayame's more risque armor attire. That's a huge the game spans over 10 missions long, usually ending with a boss battle and some instances. To my knowledge, the bosses are pretty easy in Tenchu 1. You can even strike them twice consistently to interrupt their pattern, which is pretty damn cheap the first time I discovered it. The story isn't a story as good as Metal Gear Solid, nor does it need to be. There are these small expositional dumps to get you from mission to mission, to get you from point A to point B. It's all about who to assassinate, where to go, and the characters you meet along the way. Most of the backstory between the two main characters in this game equates to a giant question mark because that exposition is not really told to you in Tenchu Stealth Assassins. But hey, I guess that's reserved for a future sequel or something that involves the backstory story of these two characters who like to give guards at night as teenagers. 
The gameplay, while fun, really hasn't aged well. These ninjas are not as nimble as Ryu Hayabusa. This game is played with frequent camera problems, and double tapping the wrong button has led me to being instantly spotted plenty of times while getting accustomed to the controls. I also dislike the AI pathing in Tenchu 1 because despite how nerve wracking things can be, trying to get a good stealth kill on these people, you also have the tendency of the AI turning around on you immediately which screws everything up for you instantly. It's a problem that I'm glad I tend you to fix by attacking people from the front. There's also a ranking system at the end of each mission that you should get accustomed to. To my knowledge, Thug is the worst rank in the game and Grandmaster is the highest. If you want to attain the highest rank, which unlocks more ninja tools, then you have to factor in less detections and not shedding the blood of the innocent in order to get more points. Whether you choose to kill people, which are basically the combative guards, is up to you, but sometimes it's encouraged because I had these moments where routine guards like to bumble in during boss fights. Did I mention the plethora of cheat codes in this game? I don't think I did. There's a very good collection collection of them for early unlocks in case you want to experiment with some of these secret weapons early. The debug mode is essentially god mode. It's at this point where they allow you to screw around with the game's code to place enemies, change music, kill all enemies, change cameras, or use forbidden items. Tenchu 1 was released to positive acclaim. All reviewers pretty much liked the idea of this hectic, steady paced stealth game that puts you in the shoes of a ninja who utilizes the tools of the trade to get the job done. There is a training mode for first time beginners where they can experiment, find out how the enemy patterns work, and how to execute properly. The only problem with this mode is that they don't teach you how the controls work, so that's a bit of an annoyance, but I guess you can read the manual if you can find it. I think that Tenchu was a fantastic treat, and honestly, they really added to the ninja genre by putting this game out there. If you have at least disguised yourself or put on armor or used the ninja tools only to hack up a guard, it completely felt good. And this was the first stepping stone into something great as a franchise. But Activision wasn't quite done yet with this unique gameplay that the series had to offer. Did you know that Tenchu 1 had two totally stylistic changes to the ending between the US and Japan regions? Look it up because I guess they wanted to flex with their new shiny 3D graphics over anime style openings. Can't beat Rikimaru with cut off sleeves though. Japan also got two special releases with Tenchu 1, the first being Tenchu Shinobi Gaisen, which had updates to the core game design. This included more interchangeable languages along with the brand new mission editor mode that gave you limitless potential for crafting user created maps that you can mold into your own missions. This feature was seen as a highlight for many users of the series and they kept implementing this mode more into future releases. The next release was Tenchu Shinobi Haikusen, and that was another release that included many more missions, even some created by other users at this point, which was a nice little bonus to keep the community foundation strong. Tenchu 1 sold 500k copies in Japan with a strong foundation and a new momentous IP for Acquire, the studio behind Tenchu. They could only go up from here. Join me as we journey through this retrospective of talking about the entire Tenchu franchise. I look forward to seeing you for the next entry as we talk about the birth of the Stealth Assassins.